we actually spoke once prior. It had to be about seven or eight years ago, if I had to guess. We both were speaking at the same conference, an ISO 27K conference yes. for the Americas. And, I, and you, remember, I remember that. And you actually spoke, and, and you spoke on ISO 27001 and uh, harmonizing NIST guidance with, you know, that was your, your, the purpose of your speech there was to talk about harmonization and what you guys were right. trying to accomplish. Uh, and it was right around the time, you know, so, so and to this day, you've, you've held true to that. I mean, you guys do a great job of cross-referencing all of your guidance to as many other forms of guidance as you can, which is super appreciated. Well, it's important, you know, mappings are always subjective, unless you're using first order predicate calculus and doing those things, you're not going to get an exact mapping. But the reason they're important for our customers, and look at that's the reason we do what we do, we, we are all about our customers. And, and if they're successful, then that means we've done our job. Mm -hmm. From a, just think from a from a business perspective, many of our federal agencies have lots of different contractors. Many of these contractors who are supporting them are also working globally. So they may have already done an ISO cert on a, on a scope of applicability for a 27,001 set of controls. And so I thought that the reason the mapping is important, that, that's actually value added. We shouldn't always want to have them go back and implement controls again just because they're from the NIST catalog. So we tried to get as close a mapping as we could from the 53 controls to the 27,001 or two controls. And that would mean that the federal agency then could make that decision. If they're working with a contractor that had an ISO cert, mm -hmm. they could actually decide if, okay, you haven't done all of the controls in the moderate baseline, but you've done maybe two thirds or three quarters. Mm -hmm. We'll give you credit for that if you can show the evidence and then right. you can work on the gap. Yep. Well, that's a whole lot better than having to go back and waste all that time and money. And so I think we're trying to be practical. It's all risk management is not about some utopia or some perfect world. It's about making real decisions, real credible risk-based decisions every day as you try to carry out these various uh, complicated missions that the feds and, and the private sector have to carry out.